Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. I am very happy to announce I've got a 70 watt diode laser. <laughs> I, you know, I've been, I made a video on this months ago before it came out just to let everybody know. And now I've got one. And uh, it just got, I just got back from a show, as many of you probably know. Uh, went great, lots to talk about there. And this just goes right perfectly into it because now I have the power to make this stuff faster. This is the most powerful diode laser on the market right now. And what does that mean? Like, where is that jump from diode to CO2? Why? I'm not going to get into all of that, but I want you to write down those questions, leave them in the description. I'm going to go over this laser. I'm going to go over what's on the website, uh, things to think about. I'm going to be making a lot of videos on this laser. And so I, I just want this video to kind of open it all up, show you what's going on. You guys write your questions of what you think, what you want me to test, what you want me to do. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. I do have a link uh, in the description. Now, I want you to use that to go over and check, get where I'm at, uh, where the Atomstack A70 Pro, and it'll be A70 Max. We'll go over a little bit about that, too. So you can go over this with me, and then just write down the questions that you have below. And we'll try, like I said, we'll try and get to all of that. Now, of course, the first thing, you get it out of the box, you're like, wow, this is so cool, I want to make something. And then you realize you're spoiled because you're used to all of these all-in-one lasers, which are amazing. And, uh, you know, I have lots of love for those all-in-one lasers. You set it up and you're ready to go. Well, this is uh, not all set up and ready to go. You need an enclosure, and there is not a lot of enclosures out there that are made for this laser. Now, after looking, I had a similar one to this that I had for my Acer 36 watt, and I actually really loved it. I modified it a little bit, and uh, it worked great. And it's foldable, pretty easy to put away. And after looking on Amazon, the price here for this one was way cheaper than anything else that I saw and larger. Now, this will not fit, as far as I can tell, it will not fit this laser. It's very close, but the very front of the laser with the, you know, that has all the electronics, you can remove that, but it can only go so far because of the wiring. So we're going to see, but I already know that I need to modify it because your second thing that you have to think about is honeycomb bed. Now, if you go over, I'll post up a picture of it, the Neja uh, 850 by 550 or something. Honeycomb, I have that one. It's not the best quality. I really like the Two Trees brand of honeycomb beds, but they don't make one. That really will, you know, trying to get that full use of what this laser will do. It is a 500 millimeter by 400 millimeter size. And so to be able to get all of that, there's not a lot of uh, honeycomb beds on the market that are made for it. Now, if you find one that says it's 500 millimeters by 400 millimeters, it's too small. Because that's including the rim and the whole thing. You really need something that's like, I'm going to guess, like 700 by 550 if you really want to take advantage of everything this does. So the size of the Neja is great, but it's going to be bigger than this enclosure. So I'm going to be modifying it. I'll probably be cutting out a section of the back so that the, the whole thing can fit in. I've already done this, like I said, with my other laser. It wasn't a big deal. And I think this is going to be the easiest way to go to get started. And $130, no tax. And uh, I had to pay, I think, $10 shipping. I bought this out of my own money. And uh, 
I think that it's going to work because I just want, <laughs> I'm excited. I want to use it. You know, I did make, I, oh, I put it back there, but I'll put up a picture. I made a first engraving really quick and a cut just to make sure it was working. I'm going to do this with all of the lasers. Uh, the one you see next to it is the, on the left here is the S1. And uh, you can see it looks way better than the S1. Not quite fair because you got to have perfectly the same settings to, you know, really make it look the same. But what I wanted you to see is uh, the real reason for doing this test is to make sure that all of the squares are equal and so that the belts are right. And, you know, the engraving looks really nice. And this is the kind of the engraving that I typically do on my stuff. I'm, it's, I'm not doing pictures or something. So the 35, this does have a, a switching to a 35 watt, which will be a little better for engraving. But I use the full 70 watts on what you're seeing. It looks good. So I was happy with that. Unfortunately, that's all I could do because I didn't have an enclosure. So I just used, I just put the hose right up next to it and sucked the air out for that. You know, when you get something, you just want to try it, right? So anyway, we'll be getting this this week and uh, it does ship pretty quick. As you can see here, it says if, if you order within the next, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, you're going to get it uh, May 6th, which is, you know, a couple of days, May 6th through the 9th. So I should have this somewhat soon. And we will get to work on it. And I, yes, I am very excited. Now I'm going to say right away, this laser is not for everyone. It is pretty much for specific use cases. Uh, small business is a great one that doesn't do a lot of fine engraving. Because it's somebody like me, right? That I'm going to be making, say, my Lord's Prayer Cross. And I'm going to be making 50 of those. Well, Am I, how long is that going to take me on, say, a 20 or 30 or 40 watt machine vice a 70 watt machine? I, and that's kind of the big difference, right? Or if you're going to be hay cutting half inch or something quite often, you're probably going to need a 70 watt. You know, one of the lesser ones just isn't going to consistently be able to do that at a, at a speed that is useful. But I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner that doesn't really know what they're going to use it for. You know, by the time that you spend a year learning how to do everything, 70 watt might even be on the low end. We don't even know. Probably not. But, but it is going to be quite a bit more uh, room, more hassle, more a lot of things because it's not an all-in-one. Um you got to think, look at, I mean, I'll show you a video of it. Look how big this little air supply thingy is and the power supply. Those got to go somewhere pretty close to the laser as well. So what I ended up going with is a three feet by three feet. So 36 inch by 36 inch, three quarter inch piece of plywood to put this on just to fit the basic stuff. So you think to yourself, that's pretty much what you're going to need uh, just to put this on, just a table. And it needs to be stable. You got this huge module going to be flying around. Believe me, if you got an unstable table, everything's going to look terrible. I built mine. Uh, it's pretty solid. And I really think that's the way to go. But if you have a workbench or something that's very solid, fine. But uh, just realize that if you got some folding table that you think you're going to put this on, it's probably not going to work very well. And you're going to need the room uh, to be able to set this and keep it if you're going to put it in your house. Now, I would like to make a permanent enclosure for this uh, if I am going to indeed use this all the time. But I think this was a good way to start out. 130 bucks, you know, can get to work and then we can figure it out. But it would be fun to make an enclosure. I believe Venturi, Ventari, excuse me, is going to be making an enclosure as well. So we keep an eye on that. And I mentioned about the honeycomb bed. I mean, really, it's literally the only one I could find on Amazon. There might be some other ones. I will get to that and leave in the description if you see one that you think will work. Um, 
And I'll try and go over all of those things for everyone that's thinking about getting this machine. As far as assembly goes, that was pretty easy. Uh, Clackshack did a video. He showed the assembly. It pretty much went exactly like that. Um, I used the manual and his video together and was able to do it without issue. I would say if it takes a little longer than some of the other ones you need to put together, it's only because it's built sturdier, so it takes more screws. So let's go over this stuff on the site. So right now it's on sale for $1,800. Just remember that you're also going to have to buy all the other stuff. It does come with the air assist, which is great, but you're going to need a honeycomb bed. You're going to need uh, an enclosure. You're going to need exhaust and you're going to need a rotary if you uh, use rotaries. Now, again, you can get this in the max which is on sale right now for only a couple hundred bucks more, $2,100. Uh, but that thing is huge. It's 800 by 850 millimeters. You better have a, a pretty good size shop. And again, a very stable table to run that on. But it would be nice to be able to make some huge things, right? So as you can see here, they do have the rotary. Of course, you're going to want light burn. Now this uh, honeycomb bed is only 410 by 420 mill millimeters that they have here on Atom Stack. So you are going to be losing quite a bit of space, uh, that useful space, if you do get this particular one. It's probably better than the Neja, but um, again, you're getting this to be able to use the whole area. So they're really good and good at stacking these diode lasers. I mean, you can see the test that I did. It looks fantastic. It cut wonderfully, it engraved wonderfully. Uh, and I, we're going to see how much better or worse when you switch it to the 35 watt. But uh, I think it's doing really great. 400 by 500, I think is really nice. And I'm going to show you some reasons why that's really nice. And uh, of course, I will now be able to make bigger versions of the things that I already make, which sometimes can be really impressive. Say you're doing a show and you want to make one really big one so that everybody can see it and then come by maybe the more affordable or smaller ones. I have tried the autofocus. That works really, really well. There is a little catch to it, making sure that you set it up correctly when you first get it, but it is a pretty nice autofocus and I think it is something that I will actually use, but we will see. And again, we're, we're going to see how precise uh, the, it really is at high speeds, but if you got one of these and it wasn't super precise, uh, first thing I would check is your table. Uh, that's the first thing that's probably going to make stuff look bad. And of course the belts. It does have a cross laser. I personally like to use the uh, light burn side with the fire on command. And uh, I will show you more about that. But a lot of people do love this. And so it, it's nice that it has it. It has the steel wheels instead of the plastic or rubber ones, which, you know, should be more precise. We are talking about a very heavy module. And it does have the screen controller. Now, I had that on my Atom Stack, on my 8s or before. I never actually used it. I, I used it to turn off some of the uh, safety features, but that was about it. And, of course, this is going to have all the safety features. Saying it's cutting 25 millimeter black acrylic, 12 millimeter MDF. We'll try some of this stuff out. I'm not really a huge fan of doing things that are, you know, just the maxed out I want to do things that I might actually use, uh, but there are times, like even for making the enclosure, I may want to cut out a piece of three quarter inch plywood in a six inch cir circle so I can put my vent in, right? Or something like that. So there are uses sometimes where you're going to want to cut a three quarter inch plywood, or you're going to want to cut a 20 millimeter black acrylic. So I will see just what we can do with this thing. 
Now it does have a Z axis, which is nice because now you should be able to cut deeper because you can just make it go down a little bit each cut. And so we'll try that out, of course. Now, one thing useful for business is the offline work. You can just, you know, put it in the controller over there at the laser and just rerun a job over and over and over instead of having to do it from the computer. That is useful. The air assist, like I said, it's pretty big, um, but it's supposed to be pretty powerful. We'll see about that. Oh, and one thing I really want to mention, one of the things I already absolutely love about this is the fan does turn off when you're not using it. And so just having that is going to be wonderful. And Well, it already is wonderful. Um, I think every laser should have that. And it's just, a, it's just a peace of mind thing for me in particular. So that's kind of it, I guess, for the first take a look. Um, again, this is before I get my enclosure, before I can really dig in, but I, I kind of wanted to go over it with everybody so that you had a chance to write your questions and so that I kind of can see what you want to talk about when it comes to this laser. I'm extremely pleased to have it. I think it's going to make a huge difference in my workload, but you know, my in main, you know, maintaining the amount of uh, things that I have to make on a weekly basis. Uh, now I can kind of up my game from home instead of maybe having to go to the shop or something. Uh, I can just, you know, sit. It's always nicer to just work from home. And these more par powerful diodes are just making that actually possible. And I'm really loving it. I knew it was coming, but it's, it's exciting that it's here now. There are way, there's still a lot of reasons to have a CO2 over a diode laser. And that's something else I will be going over. Now that we have a 70 watt diode laser, you know, the CO2 versus diode debate is very different than it was a year ago. And so I will be going over all of that as well. So yeah, like I said, leave a comment. Uh, if you're going to get one, use my link, of course. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.